No gunshots herald his approach. No trademark left behind him when he leaves. The kid has had his fill of notoriety in days gone by, and plenty of empty boots can surely testify. Some say he travels alone. That's the dead eye kid. Haunting Melody, Episode 2. What the hell are you doing here? Do I know you? Maybe not, but I know you. You're the dead eye kid. Who'd I kill that you're so riled about? What in tarnation is wrong with you? Aside from being slammed up again in a barn with iron in my face, nothing comes to mind. I was there in Carson City five years ago. Watched you take down Iron John Sandoval. And? Saw how fast you are. Huh. Used to be. Hmm? You didn't even see me coming. My mind was took up with something else. You should van moves. This ain't no place for them, as has lost their edge. You might want to back off a piece. Why's that? Can't look me in the face and admit that you're getting old. My gun hand's starting to cramp up something fierce, and I can't ease down till you pull your cojones off in the barrel. You what? Huh. Right shame to shave your stumps, seeing as we're all compadres now. You look like a man that might could use a drink. I say, Lem, uh, are you alone? Listen, you want to chat with the hosses? What do you really think of this fellow? From your tone, I'm guessing you mean the Reverend Doctor. Yes. I figure he's harmless. Can't actually know a lick about all he's talking about. Right. Do, do you ever wonder? I wonder all the time. Any particular wondering you're wondering about? About this, about spirits, about good and evil. Never reckoned on them hitched like that. You don't think of ghosts as being somehow inherently wicked? You having a crisis of faith? I reckon just like with anyone, only you can know if you're evil. Oh, well, I, I don't mean myself, I suppose. So you think you're better than everybody else? No, I don't know. What brought all this on? From what I observed in the house, there may be an argument here for an evil spirit of some sort. And? And? And what? Spirits are just as evil or saintly as the folks they used to be. Don't make no never mind to no one but me. I mean an evil spirit with powers, abilities. Ain't no such thing. I ain't never seen no spirit could touch nothing in the real world. Neither have I, but what if there is? We do whatever we gots to. Kid. Just, just limb, if you please. Oh, right, right. You done with them horses? Tucked up tight. You asked about the job? Job? Mr. Cartland's right happy to have another hand, even if you don't plan on staying for long. With all that's been going on... What all is it that's been going on? Evil spirits. Is it what's been driving off all your help? Come on, let's get you some girl. Hank will be pleased to have someone new to jaw to you. Red? Hank, this is Lamb. Come in with the doctor, fella. Hey, you work for the Reverend? Hey. I work for just about anyone who needs me. Doctor needed a guide. Lamb's gonna help out around here for a while. As long as the doc's on hand, might as well make myself useful. Did you tell him what's going on? What cleared us out? Uh-huh. Here, have a plate of stew, Lamb. I'm sure that Hank could tell it better than me. Oh, why? He actually saw it. Saw so what? That girl. She's possessed. Possessed of what? No, possessed. Taken over by an evil spirit. I don't figure I put much stock in such things. Ain't no other explanation? What else could explain how I... I saw a strange light in her window late at night. What were you doing out? What? I... I, 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 I was having a smoke. She a good-looking girl? Apart from whatever travail she's uh, in? That ain't the point. I was off a ways and saw a light. It didn't look natural, so I went closer to see. How high is this window? I don't know, just high, I suppose. I I saw everything. Right from the first, I was froze to the spot. Couldn't look away. In this strange, bluish-colored light, there was something flying back and forth across the room. A bird? No, a cushion or a hat or something. Something that had no damn business flying. Oh. I saw the girl herself... Crawling about the floor like an animal. Maybe she dropped some. But it weren't natural. You can explain away one thing after another. 
but that light won't never look right. I meant no disrespect. Just know how late at night moonlight can be a bit mazy. Can make things look wrong way round and bigger than life. Well, this weren't out in the moonlight. It was in her room. Right. You ain't, ain't, ain't a scared? I'm a bit behind when it comes to a fear in things. Got to see something for myself before I can work up to goose flesh. Yourself? I'm pretty near hightailing it out of here, I'll tell you what. One more night like that, you'll be seeing the back of me. <laughs> Ain't likely, Hank O'Hall. Huh? <laughs> you really should tell any of your tall tales too much to miss a chance for another one. It's pure mulishness what it is. The girl wanted to marry and I said no. You're surely not her father, though. My father's passed on. I ain't blood, but I married her sister, and that makes me lawful man of the house and head of this family. She's got to understand that. I still Regardless think. of whether she's old enough to marry, I wasn't about to let her run off to the damn wish wells and take half the ranch with her. Our father left us even shares. And that man married yours. Ah, I should talk to the girl now. Well, that hay won't pitch itself. Here, lend a hand, feller. Lim, uh... I need him yet for a mite. I'll send him along when we're through. That's a mighty fine-looking belt buckle you got there, Hank. Turquoise? Yeah. And silver. Mighty fine. Why do you stay, Red? Been with Mr. Cartland for now on ten years, since before he married the missus. Fact is, that was when we came through Carson City. You friends? No, nah, he ain't one for making friends of the hands. But he's fair, hard, but fair. Now tell me, apart from having the nerve of a grizzly, why ain't you scared? I plumb don't feel it. Whatever's going on with the girl, it don't hit me here. You can't? I reckon. It's like, uh, play actors. They can make you like the story, but they can't never make it real. Got a good, solid head on them shoulders, Red. I purpose to find out what all's transpiring here, and if you're strapped for it, I'd sure thank you kindly for any help. Huh. You ain't lost none of your sand, have you? I reckon the wind's just blowing it in the right direction these days. I'll open them shutters. No, just a crack. It's fair dark in here. Young lady? Who's that? It's the feller gonna tell you what a liar you been. Husband! Go on, then. Tell her. Sir, I must insist on being able to interview the girl in relative peace. Well, I ain't a-stopping you. You must be quiet and leave the girl to answer for herself. Please. Go on. Miss Heath, your lady sister has told me some of your symptoms, but I would like to hear them from you. What is your chief complaint? They never let me sleep. Poor girl does look tired. Nor us out here. I ain't had a good night through in weeks. Shh. They? Who are they? You won't believe me any more than anyone else does. I believe a great many things. Pray humor me. They come at night and pinch me. Pinch my arms and legs all over. And, and bit me. See here? You bit your own damn self. <laughs> Sir, would you be kind enough to leave? As long as you insist on berating the poor girl, she will never be calm enough to tell me all her troubles. Fine. Didn't. Come on, woman. Shouldn't I stay? For decency's sake? Man's a holy father, even if he is a soft-headed idiot. What you think he might do? I suppose. I'll call if I need help. You do that. From his yarn, Hank was right about hair when he saw the light. Hard to reckon what this would look like in full dark. What is moon like? Middly, round about. Hmm. And that'd be the window? Yep. Though the way Hank tells it, it was full open when he was looking. Oh. Let's fade back a bit. Don't want anyone to spy us. Why? Oh. The lonely cowboy cliché, always riding out, heading yonder. Join us again in two weeks when he rides back over that far horizon. The Dead Eye Kid was written and produced by Julie Hoverson. 
Lemuel Roberts, the dead eye kid, as J. Spider Isaacson. Fanshawe was J. Hoverson. In Haunting Melody, Dr. Sullivan was Michael Coleman of Tales of the Extraordinary. Bart Cartland was Renat LaBeouf. Mrs. Emma Cartland was Jackie Duckworth. Melody Heath was Melissa Bartell. Red was Jack Kincaid of Hodes Grimm. Hank was Mark Olson. Clyde Wishwell was Bob Noble. And Mr. Baker was Paul Green, author of the Encyclopedia of Weird Westerns at weirdwesterns.wordpress.com. Cover art is courtesy of Brett Colstock. Did I Kid opening theme music was for the wreck of the old 97 from a public domain recording from 1924 found on the Internet Archive. That's at archive.org. I'm your announcer, Old Hoss, also known as Glenn Hallstrom. Any other incidental music was by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Sound effects were found on SoundSnap.com, Sonomic.com, and OneSoundFX.com. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. All persons, places, critters, and events in the story were fictitious or used in a fictitious manner that are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things, living, dead, or otherwise. Mosey on down to our website at www.thedeadeyekid.com. This presentation is copyright 2010 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions. We all expect to come back now here. <laughs>